I was born in Alana, Cuba and came here in 1946. In fact, Norm and I were the only two classmates that were out of the country at the time when we came. I spent um, six years here as a student, then I came back and taught three. My father brought me here and, and I, I got out of the cab and I can remember looking around at this beautiful camping and thinking, man, this is a long way from Bermuda. <laughs> I, I, I didn't sense, never seen a car, much less ridden as long as we didn't have cars in Bermuda. Everything was on a bike or, or a horse and buggy. And, uh, you know, this place grows on you. It really does. And I, I loved it from the, the moment I got here. I was like East Sea, I was an island. You know, we were island boys, we got homesick. Hell, we hadn't worn shoes in our lives, and we had, I put on my first pair of long pants to come here to school. So it was, a, it, was, it was a dramatic change for me. And, and I rapidly found out after going to the first class here that you, if you came to Asheville School, you came here because you wanted to learn. Because if you didn't want to learn, you didn't stay very long. I was born on a sugar plantation in Cuba, 600 miles from Havana. And I was homeschooled under the Calvert School System which is from Baltimore, devised for overseas military personnel. When I came here in 1946, it was a very rude shock for me. I was absolutely very unhappy. I cried myself to sleep many nights. I wrote my mother and said, the leaves are falling off the trees here in late October. What did I do to deserve this? <laughs> and as years went by, this school really actually transformed me and saved my life in many ways because of my friendship with uh, the people that you've seen around here, the faculty who had the patience to deal with me and uh, help me. And uh, that's another reason why I came back and taught here for three years to give back to what this school did for me. Yeah, I think my favorite, favorite teacher was Uncle Will. Now, I loved history. And of course, that's what he taught, and he uh, <clears throat> he was a very strict taskmaster in the classroom. And uh, you know, it, it came back to what I just said: you you, you had to want to learn. And what school would you go to where you had to memorize the Magna Carta, you had to memorize the preamble to the Constitution, you had to memorize the Gettysburg Address? And there was one other thing you can't had to remember, memorize, and I can't remember what that was. But I can still remember bits and pieces of all those documents that, that, uh, that I had to, we had to memorize. Yeah, and, and that was a, was a great thing because if you can learn to remember, then you can use that in all of your other classes. But I was very close to all the faculty because I was so, uh, here so long. We had the form system, seventh grade to the twelfth then six forms, and I went through all of them. I guess uh, Uncle Will was a very nice man, and Hop Over Gas was very difficult to deal with in some ways, but he did a lot for me. Mr. Brooks, very thoughtful, all of them. Norman Mr. Hut uh, mentioned Mr. Hutchins. Um, I thought I'd run away one time. One of the boys tried to talk me into it when I was very unhappy. and. Um, he found out about it and came to my room and um, he sat on my bed. I was at my desk trying to do some work and he said, you know, I've been a miserable failure to you. I said, why is that Mr. Hutchins? He said, well, you want to leave and uh, I haven't done my job here by making you happy and keeping you happy and if you really want to go, I think I'll resign. Well, I said, Mr. Hutchins, you can't do that and whatever and so forth. And we left peacefully after that. And then I got to thinking about it. Boy, he really hoodwinked me. I <laughs> but he probably meant it. <laughs> so that night I had my uh, room right over his apartment and I had big cordovan shoes. So he went to bed early and I took one of my shoes off and I took it up about six feet and dropped it. And I know he was up in bed waiting for that second shoe to drop, but I never dropped it. And boy, the next morning at breakfast, I knew he was waiting for me. So I hid behind the door till the bell rang and I ran in and he was trying to catch me, but I, uh, that's what 
that's what made what Norm said make this space uh, place special. I mean, the people that had that. Uh, when you come here, you join a family, the Asheville School family. Asheville School made me the person I am today. Um, it was it's so very special. Uh, <clears throat> the first thing I think that that Asheville School taught me was that you had to have self-respect. If you couldn't respect yourself, nobody else could respect you. And, and that's carried me through my life. When I, uh, when I left here, I went to the Naval Academy. And uh, you know, the, 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 the biggest thing they talked about at the Naval Academy was, your word is your bond. Now, that was the honor, that was our honor system. It wasn't written down. It wasn't long <clears throat> and lengthy. It was your word is your bond, and that was very easy for me because I'd been taught that by Mr. Hutchins not too many years before. This school changed my life. I realized later on that I function better within a structure, and this school is very traditional, and it's just 1900. They make changes, they tweak things, but they do some serious consideration before they make any major changes here. And uh, actually, when I left here after teaching three years, I went to Tampa, Florida with one of my mentors, who was here, Edgar McClary, who really helped me a lot. Uh, and we started a private school in Tampa, Florida in 1961. I just retired there in August after 50 years. So somebody that was sort of, uh, they wrote my father and said, this boy's incorrigible up here, we don't know what to do with him. And uh, he said, either straighten him out or send him home, but I'm in Cuba, I can't do anything about it. So that's why I appreciate the faculty, their patience and what they did. And I promised Mr. McClary that I would uh, help him start the school, but I wasn't gonna stay. That was 50 years ago. And I just closed my office in August that uh, it's been a very, worthwhile endeavor and a lot of the structure that we put in there, we brought from this school. The core values of this school have not changed. And if they ever do, the school will cease being actual school. Well, the one mission of the school that's um, understood, but it's in written is that the, they try to do the best to make you a caring and responsible adult. And I think you've seen examples of that here this weekend with all of the alumni that come back and love this place. If it had not been for the thorough, basic drilling of the basics in, 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 in the classrooms here, I would have never made it through college. Um, <clears throat> a play beer at the, at the service academy is rough enough without having the academics, all the studying that you have to do. And fortunately, every course that I took in my freshman year at the Naval Academy had utterly taught to me here at, at, uh, at Asheville School. You know, the war had, in 1947, 46 and 47, when E.C. and I came here, the war had only, I when I came here, the war had only been over for two weeks. And, uh, you know, they were looking for students. Uh, people didn't have any money. Uh, it was a very difficult time for boarding schools. So I don't probably think I had any trouble getting in here. I had a lot of trouble staying, but I didn't have any trouble getting here. <laughs>